Here's the situation guys, bank holiday Sunday, I have a deadline tomorrow. Not working. I like this keyboard, I like it a lot. I've swapped the batteries, I did try that. Try turning it off and on again, it's wireless, can't plug it in. This is a big project due in tomorrow and I've not started. Where am I going to get a keyboard on a bank holiday Sunday? Hello mate, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, good. Um, do you have a spare keyboard I could borrow? Yeah, no, I know that's a weird one. It's alright, no worries mate, I'll try something else. Yes, bye. Hey bud, how's it going? Alright mate. Hey Jamie, I don't suppose... Hey Simon, you uh, yeah, yeah, not too bad, huh my sister? Yeah, I, I get that you need yours. Yeah, I'm after a keyboard. Hello? Yeah, um, yeah, my keyboard's broken. And I got a deadline tomorrow. And to be honest, I'll take any keyboard. Why? What have we got in? All right, I'll be over in a minute. Two hours later. Here's a little glimpse of what you just missed. I've just shot all of that without the microphone in. So anyway, all right. So here is the unbox um, keyboard. Finished unboxing it. Here it is. One Logic Keyboard. Let's start with the basics. Uh, build quality. Feels very nice. Um, very solid. I like that. It's even got a um, little Premiere Pro. So you probably need to decide what software you're using. Are you using Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and choose the right one from there? comes with a nice cable to wire. So right off the bat, I can see a lot of the keys that I, I know already, um, like, you know, for instance, mark, in, out, things like that. Where this is different, um, it's got a lot of blue keys at the top, which is for multicam. Now, I rarely use multicam, I don't really have the situation, but then again, you can use multicam for many things. So that's what we're gonna try. I'm gonna try editing multicam. So I think the best thing to do is plug it in and see how it goes. Let's head over to the computer. Before I go any further, um, let me show you my new overhead rig, as you've seen a few now. This one's, this one's interesting. I've got a light stand with a clamp attached to a magic arm, attached to a small bit of rigging, with another kind of changing of the angle to another magic arm, and <laughs> the camera will hang down here. So, three, two, one. Okay guys, here's the situation. I've just spent the last kind of half an hour just playing around, and what it's done is confuse me because it is teaching me a hell of a lot. Um, now, I'm pretty good on my old, you know, shortcuts, but this has been pretty great in teaching me some new things. A lot of it is still confusing me, so it's going to take me a while to get used to it. But what, it, what it's doing is making me think about how I could do things fast in the future. So it slow me down to begin with, but speed me up in the long run. Now, the thing that I found it most useful for is just for changing between monitors and speeding up that thing. But it has taught me some new things that I am going to use. So let's begin by, let's just import some stuff. So I'm going to bring in four different vlogs that I've made. So, you know, as you can see, I now have four vlogs in my project screen. Um, but what I want to do is I want to put them all in the bin. Now, normally I would come down to this bin, create a new one there, or I would right click and hit new bin. But if you've got loads of things in here and you're trying to right click and you can't find the space, it becomes annoying. Now here it tells me if I hit control um, question mark then I will create a new bin and that is super useful. So already it's helped me speed up my process. I'm going to drag them all into there. So now I have my bin. I'm going to create another one. Let's just call this music. Not that I'm going to use that but it's there. Now to create a multicam project you need to select all the video clips that you want right click and create multi-camera source sequence. I now have a sequence of multi-cams. So now I've got all four clips there. Using one, two, three, four, I can swap between the different, uh, different screens. So you could do this if you've got a two camera interview, which is quite common. So you have your two cameras there, but I've got four here. So I've decided that I want to start with screen number three. I'm going to play a bit with I, and then I'm going to hit O for out. 
and I'm going to drop it in my timeline. Once the first one's in, you can then just use full stop and comma to insert things. So using shift two, I can go back to the top screen. What you've got here is the options to go between different screens. And even if the screen is on project, you can do a shift to effects or media browser. You've got a lot of options there. So just using shift, whatever it is that you want, you can give yourself a quick shortcut there. Oh, okay, now I wanna go back. Using Shift J, it will frame by frame track back. This means that as soon as it hits that final frame, I can then hit O, done. So then I drop that in using full stop, and there I have it. I have my two tracks in my timeline. This is all very well and good, but if I zoom in, you can see that the first track is a lot quieter than the second track. So my first track is hitting about, you know, minus 18 dB, and my second one is much better at 12, which is what you want. You want to be aiming for about 12. I didn't know this until today. <laughs> um, using shift and close bracket, it will bump it up by six decibels. So I'm now gonna be a lot closer to that 12 decibel mark. And you can go down as well by six. You can go up or down. So you can see the line move on the screen. You can also, without using the shift, just go down one at a time. Which is great because if you're like me and you drag it out, you'll realize that it goes to these weird little numbers like 4.32. And it, if you've got a different scale, then it will go to some other random number. Whereas if you just have it with these things here, then it will be super accurate. I still think it's a bit quiet. So again, using G, oh, I've gone a bit wonky there, sorry guys. So using G, I can then have my audio gain and I can increase that by six decibels. So I've now got far more accurate audio, more precise, and it's taken me less time. I've not had to take my hands off the keyboard. I could do it very quickly. That's a really useful asset that I've only learned today. Now, I'm sure many of you know, using B, I can ripple out. If I've got the snap on, it's always gonna lose a few, so you can hit S and get the snap off and do it frame by frame. But what you can also do is using Q and W, you can ripple the next there. So, so if you see what happened there, wherever the marker is, by hitting W, it will snap the track back to there. But maybe I actually want the next track to start a little bit later. Using Q, I can then ripple in there. So now I've got the cut exactly where I want it. Now, so I've got my shot here. So I'm gonna just drag it in, or you could use your full stop. Um, and I'm gonna delete that space there, right? Fine. But actually, I don't want that first shot. I mean, it's lovely, but I want to start it there. So using Control K, which it doesn't actually tell you here, so Control K will delete the clip. Um, I'm going to zoom out. If I hit Delete, I've now got this space here. And historically, I would click on the space and delete it. What I've learned is that instead, if you hit Shift D, it will do it for you, and it will drag it back. So now... I don't have to worry about anything else. So I can play it back, scrub through nice and fast, boom, starts at the other shot. Things are beginning to get faster. Maybe I want to leave a marker there, a marker there, and a marker there. Using, where is it? Uh, here we go, Shift M, it will go to the next marker. I don't think you can get back to the previous one, but you can definitely get to the next one. Now, I've only had this for half an hour, an hour, and I'm learning a lot already. You will need to use this a lot to get comfortable with it. If you already know your shortcuts, then great, but this will give you some new shortcuts, and like all of them, it takes you a while to put it into your workflow, but when you do, it will speed you up. So, all in all, it's helped me with my audio, it's helped me move around faster, and it's teaching me some other little shortcuts. There are things that I don't understand about it yet. I'm not entirely sure what the next screen does, anyone want to offer, I'm listening. And it's got record features, so you can record in Premiere. You must be able to record in Premiere Pro, I, I'm sure you can, I've never done it, I don't know how many of you will have. 
that's there, but it's also got record audio and stop, fast forward. So, so that might actually be for live streaming, which is another useful thing to do. I feel like this is more useful for people who are in broadcast, but it's still useful for people who are in independent filmmaking. If I was gonna give this a rating out of 10, I would probably give it an eight, and that's, the only reason I wouldn't give it an eight is because it's not wireless, and there probably is a wireless one out there. Um, I like a wireless one. I'm gonna have a look on the website, and I'm gonna put here, is there a wireless one? For me, I'm about style, you know? I kind of like a bit more of a stylish one, but the, the metal is nice, and the one that lights up is also great. In terms of using it, that's got some incredible features on there, and yes, it is only numbers and letters with tips painted onto it essentially that's what it is it's printed on different things but that's very useful and give it time that will help now price wise to buy one of these as a keyboard that's going to cost you somewhere between 70 to 120 pounds which i know is a lot and i wouldn't spend that money myself however they also do skins which you lay over your keyboard that's about 20 30 pounds and that you'll get ones for your mac for your proper desktop keyboard. I think that's a great find. I think for 20, 30 pounds to have something that tells you all the shortcuts, particularly if you're starting out. If you're not starting out, if you're actually like me, you've got quite a lot of years experience, it's gonna teach you some new things. You might really be set in your ways, you might like using your mouse, but if you are starting out, you will become an incredibly fast editor if you buy yourself either a keyboard or a skin. The keyboard's really nice. If you've got the money, go for it but if you haven't i think the skin's likely to be just as good and then once you're done with it you can take it off or if you don't necessarily want a keyboard that looks like this all the time you can just have the skin whip it off whip it back on the whole point of the colors is just to separate it for you a bit easier so you know that all the pink ones are going to be your toggle so you can go between ripple select track select you know you can hello how do i do that Huh, wow, did you know that? Sorry guys, just figured out something. Um, okay, so arrow will select everything or shift arrow will select the track. So for instance, if you've got something up there, arrow selects everything, shift arrow selects just the track. If you hit shift A quickly, it'll go backwards. Oh, anyway, sorry. Now, as fun as that's been, I do have an edit to do. I'm gonna use a few of them and speed it up. So wish me luck guys, my deadline tomorrow. All right guys, have a good one. I'll see you then.